Well, I have defended Cam Newton a lot in the past, everything from stealing the laptop at Florida. I said he's young and maybe we should be paying players anyway. Maybe they wouldn't have to steal laptops if they were getting pay paid. I defended him when his father allegedly took money from Mississippi State for Cam to sign a letter of intent. I said the sins of the father can't be the sins of the son. I defended him after the Super Bowl when he acted like a petulant child and left the uh, podium uh, and not speaking to reporters after the game or only speaking for a few minutes. And I'm just not going to defend Cam Newton anymore because he is way too famous. He is way too much in the spotlight to not understand what kind of reaction his comments were going to get. It's almost like he went out of his way to make a dismissive and sexist comment to a female reporter when he had absolutely no business doing that. And it doesn't even matter what the question was. He has absolutely no business doing that. Women shouldn't have to defend themselves on how much they know sports, which I feel bad that a lot of my colleagues have to do that today. You know, I don't think, though, that said, Cam didn't set women who cover sports back. He didn't set football players back. We're not going to paint with a broad brush here, but he set himself back a lot with this comment. And, you know, I have a personal experience where I interviewed Cam Newton in 2014. And I went back to that interview because I remember how I felt leaving the interview. And I, one of the biggest takeaways was that until we got on camera and the camera started rolling, Cam wouldn't look me in the eye. You know, I tried to foster a little bit of a connection, you know, um, telling him I had been to Auburn twice and I'd interviewed his coaches there. I was on the field when he won the national championship and tried to establish some kind of rapport. He just really didn't want it. You know, he was really apathetic about it. And it's clear he didn't want to be doing the interview, even though he was hawking a cologne at the time. But I asked him in that interview to give advice to the new crop of quarterbacks who were coming out of the draft, you know, knowing how much the responsibility was on his shoulders, not just football, but everything else. And he said his advice was always be a student, always be learning, and to realize that as the quarterback, you always have the spotlight on you. And listening to that now, three years later, I feel like Cam has not followed his own advice. Well, that's the kind of answer that makes me think it was a coached response at, at this point. Uh, you know, I, I find his comments disappointing because there's been a lot of what he's done in front of the press and, and things he said that I've kind of been, you know, what are you talking about, dude? This one made me cringe, like physically cringe, because of, it's not even the content. I mean, the content is terrible, but the dismissiveness, as you mentioned, you know, it's not a verbal flub here. You know, this is what he meant. At least it comes across as what he meant. And it's disappointing because I've also, you know, I defended Cam. I, I think Cam Newton's an awesome player. I, I think Cam Newton has been the recipient of unfair, sometimes coded criticism. But this... You can't say that. I mean, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And I don't have to sit here and defend women who cover sports. I mean, nobody I've worked with prepares as hard as you do, but I don't think that needs to happen. I think, you know, we can talk about Cam Newton and what he said without calling him the worst person who ever lived or anything like that and just be frank that those comments are unacceptable.